Today I've got a guest with me who is in Virginia and her name is Suzanne and she's going to share how she's made tremendous improvements with her rheumatoid arthritis by following the Patterson program and making lifestyle changes. And we're going to then cover all the problems that she encountered along the way and how she was able to resolve those. And so we're going to learn a lot and this is going to be a really actionable and helpful interview. So thanks for coming on and sharing your story and your helpful tips, Suzanne. Thank you so much. I just appreciate the opportunity to do this because I know how much I look forward to listening to every Pattison Program podcast I can get my hands on. So um, I really appreciate um, just uh, knowing that, you know, it'll be out there for somebody else to watch later. And um, I appreciate being a part of that. So thank you for allowing me that opportunity. Yes, I think there's always something new in each episode. I'm sure that people gain something from every interview. Um, Sometimes it's maybe as simple as just a a key message that's reinforced. And other times, you know, I've had people highlight particular interviews that have been the one pivotable moment for them that has transformed uh, their approach or their health or whatever. So, um, either either end of the spectrum, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to create some some help in some way. So let's get the snapshot from you. Let's get this 30 second TV commercial. Suzanne used to be this and now I'm this. Let's let's hear it. <laughs> okay, great. So um, just beginning back in the day, um, I had inflammation that started in my left knuckle of my hand right here. Um, it was like a little golf ball and I had no idea. I didn't know anything about RA or anything about autoimmune diseases or anything. I'm a real healthy person. And um, it, I thought, is it salt? Is it popcorn? Did I have too much popcorn? What was it? You know, but it just all of a sudden showed up and then um, it kind of faded away after a few days. And then all of a sudden I started having pain in my left knee. So that was a new thing. And I'm like, well, am I running too much? Am I running wrong? Am I not stretching? Then I went in and had that checked and they said, wow, you have a torn meniscus. How did I do that? There was really no accident or any reason that I would have had one. Um, And then I started having some ankle trouble and I thought, I really got to quit running. I just got to quit doing that. You know, so um, and then I started getting some pain in my toes and then I thought, wow, this is ridiculous. What's happening? And and these pains did not all stay in my body together. They kind of came and went, you know, so that I would get relief from one, but then another would crop up and then one would maybe come back. Um, so that was kind of the history of it. And then finally, I think the breaking point was just when I um, felt that my knees were oddly a little larger than I thought they should be. They just look different than normal. And so I went in and I had my um, doctor run some tests. And she said, you know, let's do an RA test and see. I'm like, okay, uh, that's great. I was pretty sure it'd come back negative, but it did come back positive. And um, she said, you need to see a rheumatologist because you've got some numbers here that are, you know, probably within, definitely within the realm of having RA. And I said, ah, oh, all right, let me let me think about that. I always tell my doctor that, let me think about that because I really want to go home and think about these things and research. So I went home and I researched and um, I found you uh, because I typed in the search bar healing from RA naturally. <laughs> and because I just knew that there had to be a better way than medication. And I knew that's what they were going to do for me, put me on medication. So, so yeah, so I, I did that. Um, and I started on the Patterson program and now small snapshot, like what you're looking for is just, I don't have any knee pain anymore. My knees are normal size. Uh, I don't have any ankle pain. I have minimal finger, not even pain. I would call them aches once in a while, just like a, an ache. Um, I can totally close my fists easily. And, uh, that, that used to be a hard thing for a while. And, uh, the wrist pain is still there. It's definitely not a nine like it used to be. So it's kind of at a level like a three now. Uh, but that's something that I'm looking for forward to overcoming. Yeah. So that's my little snapshot. Wow, that's fantastic. And over what time period are we talking here? So when I look back, knowing what I know now, 
I think things started, you know, quite a while ago. I'd say about 2014 Hmm. um, when things started. So that was five years ago. And I, I think if they would have diagnosed me, if they would have, if I knew about having an RA test, probably I would have come up positive. But then now I look at it and it's like five years. And I think with my eating style and my exercise and all the things that I put into it, I, I'm still, I'm still not on, you know, RA drugs. Mm. So I'm really thankful. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. Yeah. Well, um, let's, it sounds like, uh, you managed to bypass the medical system entirely. Um, did you take any of the, uh, uh, painkillers or anything like that to uh, just to alleviate some of the, I guess the, you know, troubling pain while you're going through the program. Right. Okay. So at first I didn't, um, and I, ju- I I just really didn't need it at first. But then um, there was one point. I think it was about 2016, about three years ago. Um, I had surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome mm. and because I had numbness in one of my hands and it was fantastic because it totally alleviated that. I mean, I could wake up in the morning and totally feel my hand and those, that was a rare day. So I was really happy I had that done. Um, and so I started taking an NSAID, which is meloxicam or Mobic as it's called. Um, and that seems to help me. I mean, just sufficient for me. Mm. Um, and it's easier, gentler on the stomach than other NSAIDs. So I do take that. I have lowered the dose over the years. So um, I'm, I'm on my way out of it, I think. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And so just before we get into some of the more of the details of going through the program and things that came up for you that were challenging that you've been able to, to work through, um, what time frame are we talking about from when you started the Patterson program to today? So I started the Patterson program. I have to say I had a mini start back in 2017 mm-hmm. because I I didn't sign up for the forum and everything yet, but do you have a section where you can like download the e- ebook? Yeah. And and I, so I did that. And so I I did that and I had it spiral bound. Beautiful. So I got all my my notes and my highlighting and my underlining and and because Computers are great and reading it digitally is fine, but I'm kind of a visual person. So I really needed to have it in front of me so I could highlight and look back and just have it with me, you know, so that helped me a lot. So I did that at first um, and it worked great um, because I, I pretty much stuck to it and I was I was doing really well, except um, about a year later, I realized that, you know, I feel like I'm kind of failing at it because I'm not. I, I know I was doing the program correctly, but I felt like my mind really wasn't in the right place. I wasn't, and I think that's where support comes in. So I talked to my husband and I said, you know, I think I need support. I think I need to go on and, and get on the, the whole program. And he's, he's very, he's very um, supportive for me. Um, and he knows a lot about um, just having support in counseling and things like that, because he's a, he's a John Maxwell one of John Maxwell guys. So he's like, you know, I see the the validity in having support and I think that you should do it. So I did. And um, I think that's when I really say that the program started working for me and has continued to work for me. So the support is like 80% of this program. Mm. So, yes. yeah. 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 Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's get into some of the nitty gritty. Um, we um we wanted to cover together. You and I discussed how we could add some things to this interview that are different, so that people uh, who watch every episode can get some, get some new things. Um, can you run through a, 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 some of the things that you found challenging and ways that you're able to work around them in any particular order, whether it be with regards to the food or or exercise challenges, and uh, and we can discuss them one at a time. Okay, sounds good. So. Um, when I, uh, 
when I started, I, I was always a healthy, I would say a healthy eater. And I think a lot of people on your podcast and in your program have said the same thing. I mean, they, they thought they were what was considered healthy, eating healthy. My issue um, being a, a vegan at the time was that I had a lot of nut butters and things that I was eating and coconut oils and things, which were in a lot of the foods that I would make. And so I found that mm. those, I, to this day, I don't eat nut butters and I don't eat things with oils and coconut oils. And I can't because I know that they directly affect my wrists, I'd say in about 24 to 48 hours. Yep. And you state yep. that in your program that it's going to show up. You know, sometimes it can be even longer than that. But if you keep a little journal of, you know, what you're eating, um, which I have done. So I've got this this little book awesome. here that I, I call Beating RA. Yep. And awesome. I, I write all of my um, foods that I try and symptoms that I have. And so I can always look back and see how long it took me to, um, you know, have a symptom from something. So it's easier to do that way. And then it doesn't leave it vague in your mind. So you're just not sure what it is. Because yeah, that's I think that, right. can cause, that can cause you to give up if you if you do it that way. Yeah, that's fantastic. So there's two things there. I don't want to skip too quickly on to talking about the journal. I want to talk more about that. Um, but you mentioned the nut butters. A uh, question comes up more often than I, you know, would have imagined. Um, you know, people people actually ask more often, can I have nut butters? Butters? Can I have almond butter, uh, uh, particularly almond butter, uh, and some of the other uh, nut butters, macadamia nut butter, and things um, more often than the nuts themselves? Which I think is interesting. First of all, I think, what are you putting it on? I mean, are you eating bread? If you're eating bread, uh, then you're pretty advanced through the program. Things are going pretty well. Um, you know, it might be okay to, to have these nut butters. But when we think of in terms of oxidative stress, and we're trying to avoid adding free radical load, once we crush up that nut and expose it to oxygen think about the outside of an, uh, an apple that's protective once we cut through and then we've got the apple exposed to the oxygen it quickly oxygenates and you can see the brownness form on the apple within probably 15 20 minutes and i have the same paranoia and i haven't got you know studies on this to support this but my paranoia on this is that we've We've changed the dynamic of the nut by making it a nut butter. It's no longer a whole food. It's a, it's a whole, it's a, it's a oxidized whole food. Um, and when we are really delicate as we are with rheumatoid arthritis, we are the most delicate of human beings when it comes to diet and exercise. Um, I think we should be going for the, the you know, the whole version uh, of the food. And so I find that in, uh, interesting and and revalidating my views on on the nut butters um, and of course the coconut oils and whilst there's a whole you know community of people who don't follow the sort of path that we do uh, in the paleo and uh, you know keto kind of camps uh, who think that coconut oil is a health food which we know in the science is not not just in Patterson program world um, you know we know that coconut oil is going to cause inflammation uh, in a in an a, in a autoimmune uh, body so we don't want to be we don't want to be doing that so yeah I just wanted to make sure that people didn't didn't gloss too too much over the important information there uh, yeah. nut butters if if you want to go down that path try the nuts first I like pistachio nuts they're actually highly antioxidant great pistachio nuts yeah uh, cashew nuts are another good option and potentially almonds as well, but uh, I like them in that order. Pistachios, cashews, and almonds in that order. Um, and they're all got to be dry roasted, dry roasted, yeah. So, um, and they did take me a long time to be able to eat those. Um, yeah, you know. I, I think I'm not actually, I'm not at the point where I can eat those, like, like to sit down and eat those as a snack. I may be able to put a few whole nuts or even just cr if I crush them myself, raw whole nuts on a, on a salad, yeah. which I don't often do because I don't ever want to guess that that's wrong for me or not. But, but if you think of the nut butters, I mean, imagine how many, I, because I make my own, I used to make my own nut butters when I was eating nut butters. And, you know, it takes like a whole bag of nuts to make just a little bit of nut butter. So imagine 
even if you're not thinking about the oxidative part of it, think about the quantity of nuts that you're actually spreading on that bread. It's incredibly a large amount if you think of it in those terms. So you've got a whole bag of nuts that you put in the food processor and now you get a little bit of nut butter out of it. And you've got, you're going to put what, maybe a tablespoon or so on a, mm. on a piece of bread. Mm. I mean, number one, that's a lot of fat. Mm-hmm. And number two, that's a whole lot of nuts. That's a whole lot more than you could eat in an hour if you climbed the tree and started eating the nuts. Most definitely. So, yeah. Not, yeah. Not that's very natural. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's uh-huh. another great point. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's now talk about the journal. Um, you've created this journal. Let's let's kind of uh, introduce your journal again and tell us uh, how you use it. Can you give us a peek inside even? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, so this is the journal. And um, I called it Beating RA because that's what I'm doing. We're all doing that. So we have to keep in the forefront of our mind that we are beating this. We are beating it. So, um, yeah, so I what I did is I just um, started out by in the flap I just wrote my test results so that I could always look back and see where I came from. So these were my very first test results. So um, so that was a good reference point for me. And then I just, you know, I'll just like I'll put on there like the date. And actually, I would put in sometimes how much I weigh um, if that if weight is an issue for people. Mm -hmm. It's not always an issue for me. I'm certainly not a thin person, but I'm also not overweight. Um, when I first started the Patterson program, I got, I did lose about uh, 10 pounds, I'd say, but you know, after you start adding in a lot of the grains and things, I mean, you get, you gain that back, you know, so it, I, I don't have a problem with being too thin, but Good. then I, I normally stay within 10 pounds of where I'm mm-hmm. at anyway. So, yeah, so this, the journal has helped me to understand, especially going through uh, the first three days when you juice fast, um, it helps. It helped me to sort out just the mental aspect of doing the Patterson program uh, because I could write down how I felt. And um, you go through some crazy feelings when you're not eating, you know, mm-hmm. um, in your mind. You're just like, is this worth it or is this going to be a never ending thing or, you know, how will I ever get back to being a normal person again. And and then you go through aches and pains. And mm-hmm. it's really nice to look back on on this and see, oh yeah, this caused a backache back then. So if I if I do a reboot, like if I go back and do it again, I know what to look for. And it doesn't scare me anymore because I've journaled it. And mm-hmm. I already know what what's going to happen to my body in a general way when I start rebooting again or and I must say, when I first started, and I did write this down in the in the journaling section on your website, uh, the Patterson program, that I never want to start over. And I still feel like I don't want to start over. I want to keep going forward. But I have realized the benefit of saying, you know, there are some tweaks that I need to make. And I need to go back and go to the basics. And like you've said many times, the basics guideline can move up as to what foods you know for sure that you can handle. So you don't have to go back to just celery juice or just spinach salad. I mean, you can, like you said, add in the things that you know are okay for you. So it's not scary anymore. So when you journal, you can look back and say, you know, I'm comfortable with this now. I can do it. I know what to expect. And I'm very hopeful for what's going to happen, you know, so that I think for me, that's the importance of the journaling. Yeah, I completely agree. I uh, have records everywhere, old exercise books, uh, like the one you have, maybe not quite as colorful. Um, (laughs) And I've got, um, I have a, uh, uh, what I call my life sheet on Google, um, Google Sheets. Okay. So it's like, uh, you know, the Excel spreadsheet that that, uh, Google has. Um, that I can access on my phone or, or anywhere. Um, and I will make updates in that of things that I'm doing all the time. Um, and, and in a, it just, uh, so that's kind of across the board. So that might be, I bike twice today. I did uh, this with regards to my exercise or so on. I went to Bikram. I even make notes 
as to what I was able to achieve in Bikram each class. I mean, it's pretty um, detailed. And then I have a separate one for the gym. And so I have a a little book, and I haven't got it with me, uh, a little book that it's in the glove box of the, the car. And every time I go to the gym, I write down specifically how many reps on which machine on which day and I can always look back and 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 see and just like you I make notes of what doesn't work so if there are some things and there are for me particularly with my elbows that uh, that are damaged um if I try and do heavy things um that my uh my elbows don't like I notice it the next day and I make a note and I go back and then if I experience that again, I look back and I say, oh, that's because I did that exercise that I knew that was bad for my elbows because uh, I wrote down last time. And, I, you know, you build this, I guess you build your own sort of set of rules for yourself and, and, and this comfort of knowing that, okay, that doesn't work, so I'm going to avoid that. So I love the journaling. And, you know, that's one of the reasons that I put the support forum together is because it's, it's in the public, published literature that people who write down their problems with rheumatoid arthritis um, on a regular basis actually have a better health outcome than those people who don't. And people who talk about their problems, not even to a therapist, but just to other people, have a yeah. better health outcome. So if we are not talking or writing down about what we're experiencing. It's almost like, it's like almost not going to the bathroom and getting out what needs to get out and it builds up and becomes toxic. Yeah. So, and then you don't even know it because it's subconscious. So it's just festering under there and you can't, you, 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 things go wrong and then you just don't know why, why is this happening to me or why am I stressed out or, you know, how did I get to this place all of a sudden when you wake up in the morning and say, Yep. Why why am I here in this in this way right now? Because you haven't understood the underlying, you know, issue that's been going on and, and just brought it to the forefront of your mind so that you can tackle it. Yep. Yep, for yeah. sure. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I love that I, I, I could talk all day about the journaling and record keeping. Anthony Robbins says that what we record improves and what we record and then share with others improves exponentially. I so agree. Absolutely. It's such 100%. a lovely <laughs> it's it's beautiful. Okay, so what else can you tell us that you've uh, found little cheats for or hacks for? Okay, so um, well, yes, when you say the word cheat, so here's a little cheat that I, I will confess. Um, the first three months, I did not um, drink coffee. I went 100% off of it, and it took me about five days to detox from it. Cause that's, that's some strong stuff. You know, caffeine is not good for you. And I know that. So, um, I, I actually started drinking coffee again and I have to say my mood improved. <laughs> 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 I don't like to tell people that, but you know, um, but then I thought I, I started feeling a little bit guilty and I thought, you know, it might keep me that guilt feeling is also not a good stressor to have. Mm -hmm. And it will keep, it kept me from coming back on and just saying, Hey, I'm dealing with this. So, you know, I went for uh, this, this, that's not right because this causes stress. And so I thought, I'm just going to let you know that right up front that I started having my cup of coffee and yes, it's not ideal. But I just wanted to address the fact that I got to the point where I didn't want to let it stop me. I could have made a decision at that point and said, well, okay, so I I had coffee. Now I have to quit the Patterson program and I'm just a failure. You know, I could have done that. But I decided that, you know, everybody's got their little thing that is difficult in life and that they're dealing with and they're trying to work out. However, they're not they're not there yet. They're not perfect. And I'm certainly not perfect. And I'm not there yet. But I have a lot of things to look forward to. So I just decided that, you know what, I'm still going to stay with the Patterson program, because of the fundamentals of the program, and everything about it, add value to my life, and help me to um, just sustain this healing journey and to look forward to the day when 
I'm not going to have any of those pains. So if there is something that's holding someone back, whatever it is, whether it's that cup of coffee or whether it's that fact that they just can't stand Bikram or <laughs> whether it's, and I've got something to say on Bikram because I actually like it. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, no matter what it is, that, that thing, maybe, maybe it's a social circumstance where they can't, um, they just can't not go out with friends and, and have a drink or something. I don't know, but don't let that keep you 100% from the program because I think I would do myself a disservice if I didn't continue. So I, I've just made the decision that I'm going to go on with it. And every day I'm going to strive to do better in every aspect, whether it's exercise or um, my diet or whatever it is. And, and I'll get there someday, just like everybody else. We're human. Yeah. And let's face it, if having a cup of coffee each day makes you stick with the other 99% of the program, then yes. you are certainly ahead of the game. Um, and I think that it would be a little bit of a far-fetched claim to say that the cup of coffee would undermine uh, progress when you're doing all the other things correctly. I think the truth is that, you know, each each bite of food or each drink that we have and each movement that we make and each thought that we have you know everything has one of these like pebbles throwing into a big pile of rocks it's all it's all just having a little effect and if we um if we uh get most of it right most of the time then we're still going to end up on top um, right. We did mention before the impact of some of these very negative items, such as the oils in particular, if we just focus on the oils. And if your daily habit each day was wanting to, you know, put oil on your salad, I would say, look, how are we having this conversation? How are you having, why are you on this podcast? Because you would be in agony. Um, Absolutely. And that would be undermining you. But we're not talking about that. Are we? We're talking about something that you've found has been uh, maybe uh, negligible or, or not impactful on your progress. Yes. And I think if I, I know for a fact that if I, um, when I tried the coffee, uh, that one cup, if I had awakened the next morning and my joints were crazy, I totally would have. I, I mean, I'm not, I may be silly sometimes, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> and so I think that's the thing with the these inflammatory um, uh, foods and things that, and it may, like you said many times in the program, it may be a different fruit, food for a different person. So maybe someone can um, go ahead and not have a reaction from whatever it might be. I'm not sure. I mean, whatever food it might be to not have a reaction from it, um, then and if they enjoy that thing, then go ahead for a while until they determine that that's detrimental. But I think with with the coffee and things like that, if if I feel like it's not detrimental to me, then I'm I'm OK with it until I get to the point. Honestly, Clint, when I look into the future, I do see myself being free from those things because I, I don't want to be addicted to anything yeah. in this yeah. life. Yeah, nothing. We shouldn't. Yeah. We shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's where my imperfection comes in. And so I, I keep striving. Oh, look, I, and, and if, if you never, never stopped, uh, I don't think it's a problem um, as long as it doesn't make your joints feel worse. Like right. seriously, uh, you know, some of the longest living people on earth, according to the Blue Zones by Dan Butner, um, you know, they're, they're, what they most frequently drink is water, tea and coffee. Okay, so it's not like coffee is an instant disqualifier for having longevity and an instant disqualifier for health. Um, right. It's just um, something that uh, isn't going to be a healing food, right? And so, or a healing drink. And so, against the worst enemy that we could imagine, I have it out of the program because I just want to give everyone the greatest possible chance of success because yeah. the odds against us are so great. Um, 
They, and, they and are, and I all. agree. And, mm. and because it's an acidic type of a thing that causes, uh, you know, it's not alkalizing. So you're, it's not good for your body to have that. And it, and like you said, all, all things work together. So, you know, our system is so complicated and every little thing that we can do to bring it to the state of health, you know, even if it's, if it is getting rid of the cup of coffee or, a, I mean, that's what we, that's what you strive for. You set that up as your goal to do that 100%. So if we keep that in the forefront of our minds and then, and then I, I'm talking to myself, <laughs> I work towards that, work towards that goal, right? <laughs> I can hear you thinking this way, but look, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side of the fence. I'm on your side of the fence here for a little bit. And I want to just, because I, I, I think it's worth spending just another minute or two on this. Sure. The, the couple of benefits that may, and I'm not encouraging people to start drinking it. I'm just saying yeah. why it may not be a problem for you and why people might find this interesting, that if they are also having a cup of coffee and they want to keep that, uh, as to why it could be good if it helps them stick to the rest of the program. Yes. Um, we know it's a diuretic. So, constipation is far worse than having a cup of coffee. Okay. So if until someone is able to have regular and normal bowel movements, the cup of coffee helps them achieve that, then in, those in, in that instance, it's a benefit. Um, right. It also helps, as you said, it, it, it does tend to stimulate stomach acid. And if someone has low stomach acid and they find yeah. that they... Uh, on having a cup of coffee uh, doesn't worsen their joints. For that person, it may be helping to, you know, digest uh, some of their protein better because the stomach acid's heavily um, required for protein digestion. And so, look, there's not that there, that doesn't stack the argument in favour of coffee, but yeah. you know, nor is coffee the you know the ultimate enemy. The ultimate enemy is something that massively inflames the joints and we've covered some of those and there's obviously a bunch of other things that that um that we could list but let's move on to the next bullet point what's your next bullet point or thing that you've been able to overcome or or more cheats even okay let's see um maybe just talk a little bit about uh, i wanted to discuss a little bit about exercise and yeah. how uh, I had to really be open to change when it came to exercise because um, I've always exercised ever since my high school years, um, at least three times a week um, in various different forms of exercise. However, it was mainly like the, the home workout. So I'm, um, I'm more comfortable doing workouts at home than I am going to a gym or whatever, just because, um, you know, I don't want to give myself any excuse not to go to the gym or not to get my workout in. So if I have, if I work out right here in my home and everything's available to me, then I'm likely to do it all the time, you know, and to be good at it. So um, when I first started, um, I was uh, running and I was doing um, weights and I was also doing some high intensity um, cardio. So then the knee problem and the ankle and all that stuff cropped up. And I had to make some changes. So what I did is I went to um, just plain jogging and not not going very fast and then doing um, some yoga. And now this yoga wasn't Bikram yoga at the time because I didn't know anything about Bikram yoga. Um, so I was doing yoga, which had a lot of um, wrist work in it, actually. So then when I started your program... I thought, you know, I'm going to give this Bikram a try. And it, I didn't wait very long until I tried it. Um, we may have Bikram in this area. I'm not sure because we are in Virginia and we're in the D.C. area. So we've got almost everything you can think of in food and exercise and everything. However, I knew for it to be successful for me that I would have to have it accessible right here at home to do whenever I wanted to. So I did a little research and found Bikram's um, yoga book online on Amazon and I ordered it and it has the pictures and all the moves and then he's got um, there are a couple videos online that you can find that show the moves so I I did that and I do to this day I do it now I don't do hot yoga because I can't I don't want to grow mold in the house or anything <laughs> so I can't, I can't you know I can't do hot yoga but um um 
But I think that, like I said before, is with the coffee, you, you can't let one little yeah. aspect deter you from doing something, you know, just do something. So, um, yeah, so I do the Bikram and I do the full 90 minutes and I do it at least three times a week. Awesome. And I do it in the serenity of my own home in the peace of my own surrounding and on my own time. And I find that that helps my attitude. I'm not rushed to run out to a class. I'm not pressured to, you know, what do I need to wear? How do I, you know, what am I going to look like? Or, you know, how is it going to be? I just, it's so relaxing. And if you can wrap your mind around just relaxing about the whole thing and doing it the way it works for you, then don't let Bikram stop you from trying it. Do it at home if you don't want to run out and find a class. There are so many people that have said, you know, the closest class is 90 miles away or whatever. Mm. Don't let it stop you. Mm. This is a very small world with the technology we have today. Mm. So just set up your set up your computer and just hit one of the online um, free courses and just follow it. They got all the moves. They'll show you how to do it. And mm. it's encouraging and um, so I really love the, that aspect of being able to change the exercise to fit where I'm at mm. in the journey that I'm on. Do you know what I mean? So I've had to, I've had to be a little bit um, lenient with myself as far as, hey, maybe I can't run, but I can walk. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, if I can't walk, I can go do the, the bicycle. Mm-hmm. Or if I can't do the bike, then, hey, I can do some stretching. Whatever it is, I just have to say, I'm going to do it today. Um, I may have to change the way I do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Um, the word that comes to mind is resourcefulness. You have yes. a lot of resourcefulness. Uh, you're able to um, find a way of, of making it work for you under the circumstances um, and uh, not having to make it perfect. Um, but actually still making it part of a, a, a routine and a habit, which is the, the goal. Uh, the goal is the habit. Uh, if we can establish yeah. the habit, the results will come. Okay. Well, there's, that, a, I, there's a way. <laughs> yeah, I loved that one. Okay. Have you got any other little uh, tricks up your sleeve to share with us? Um, let's see. I think, I think one, of the, one of the things that I like to – that keeps me going is just to visualize myself healthy and well and see that picture clearly in my mind. Um, Because at this point, well, right now I'm 55 years old. And so I think if I were to look at it in a, the worldly view of RA is that in 10 years, a person would be really incapacitated or in a wheelchair Um, But I'm not going to go there mentally ever. I'm never going to go there. I'm always going to look forward to visualizing myself healthy, well, enjoying life, and just continuing on with the journey every day and enjoying this life for what it has every moment of the day. So I never let myself dwell on negative aspects. And I have to say that... It is a real thing when you have an autoimmune disease to subconsciously, to allow your subconscious to give you negative thoughts and help you and and make you come to this. And and you've discussed this before on your podcast, this dark place Mm. um, where you, you feel hopeless and helpless. And I find that those times do come to me, but they usually come to me at like, five or six in the morning when I'm just starting to wake up and my, I'm starting to come back into consciousness. And I have to immediately force that out of my mind and say, no, we are going to be healthy and well, and we're moving forward. And it's going to be a good day today. And I find if I say that to myself, it actually turns out being a great day. And I really look forward to um, the healing process, you know, but you have to be really conscious about pushing down those negative thoughts and not allowing them to take over your mind or your, your will. Because I think when we dwell on those things, it really shapes how the reality, it really shapes our reality. Oh yeah. Yeah. Any of the experts in creative visualization, um, 
will tell you that um, you know whatever you focus on the most will perpetuate in your life. And this is why every time we get a bill in the mail, we shouldn't create a fuss and talk about the bill that's arrived in the mail and it's another bill, I've got another bill. Well, guess what? It feels like all you ever get in the mail is a bill. But right. when, you, when, you, when the mail comes in, we should just acknowledge, okay, there's a bill to pay, get it done. Just pay the bill online, whatever, take care of it, don't give it much thought, no need to discuss it. And we've got letters from friends and family and things that we can talk about and let's just rejoice and over- uh, sort of discuss and, and celebrate those positive things. And then all it will seem like is that we're getting letters in the mail from loved ones. And, and whilst yeah. it's, a, it's a sort of a little uh, uh, light example, that's how it plays out for us definitely with our health as well. And, you know, I actually said to Melissa yesterday, I said, it's almost like the human being is just designed to whinge and complain. Because all I'm ever hearing from people, when you, how, how are you, how are you going? Oh, I'm going okay, but this is wrong. How are you going? Oh, today wasn't too bad, but this went wrong. And okay, why? It's like all everyone ever does, and I'm guilty of this, always like blah, 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 but, well, let's just talk about, you know, how that can have an impact on us, especially when we're talking to ourselves. you yeah. know, oh, this hurts yeah. more, that hurts more, and it can be really dangerous for us. So. You know, um, I like to over-celebrate small victories if we, you know, really, really celebrate small victories. I tell the kids, you know, hey, this, that, and the other, I was able to lift this extra weight, or hey, I was able to do this at Bikram. And whilst the rest of the class I may have really disliked, I, let's talk about the positive. And it, it is a bit of a, it is, it's literally a mind game. We have to control the mind by feeding it the things that we want it to respond to. And what you're doing... Yes. It's not easy, is it? It's not easy when something's not right to try and twist it. It, it is an effort. But, it, but it's important, like you said, to control the mind because we mm -hmm. can control the mind and we are the only ones that control our own mind. So yeah. I think, you know, if you have trouble with the, if anyone, including myself, has trouble with the, uh, you know, the complaining thing, I mean, we're human, we do that. Mm -hmm. But acknowledge it and say, okay, I'm going to give myself five minutes to yeah. whine. Five minutes to whine. And when I'm done with the five minutes, yeah. I can't whine yeah. anymore. Yeah. So it's all got to be positive after that. So go ahead and acknowledge it because you're a human being and you, yeah. you do have those feelings. Get it out of the way yeah. and don't let it get in the way of the rest of your day. So yeah. I really yeah. like that. I really like that. Yeah, because we have to share. We have to get it out. But let's get it out. Let's get it all out. Let's scrape it right to the bottom of that barrel and clear everything, yes. not just the superficial stuff, but all of the stuff that we imply may happen to us because of that and all the things yeah. beyond that. And then when we get all that out, we can say, all right, well, that's the worst that could happen. What's likely to happen? Probably a lot less today. And now let's go and do something positive. Let's take massive action right now. Let's jump on the exercise bike or let's go yeah. and hang from a pull-up bar that we've bought and put above our doorway. Or let's yeah. go and grab some of these exercise bands and do some bicep curls, you know, whatever it yeah. might be. Um, yeah. Or let's go and make a green juice. So yeah. I love that. Absolutely. that that's oh, a great yeah. one. The visual, Visualize healthy and well. Well, yeah. thanks, Suzanne. Have we missed anything? I don't think so other than, um, yeah, like you mentioned, the green juice at the end. I mean, that's a 100% important thing. Got to have your green juice, whether you're juicing it or putting it in a smoothie, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Got to have your green juice. And one little thing that I like to do is I my best green juice, not juice, but a smoothie. I love celery juice and I do have that, but I do have a green smoothie that with banana and kale. What I do is I take a fresh bag of kale, a nice big bag, and I pop it in the freezer right from the grocery store mm -hmm. in the freezer. Yeah. And then about two days later... I take the bag and crunch it all up into little tiny powdery bits. And then now I have a bag of powdered kale that I just scoop into my smoothie. And um, you can get a whole lot of kale in your body when you've crunched it all up. <laughs> That's excellent. I've never heard yeah. that one. That's a great yeah. tip. And it, it is a great tip because you can even do that with leftover salad. Like let's say you made a big salad and, you know, it's been in the fridge for a day and then, but you, you really, it's not in the situation where you want to eat it, just put it in the freezer. And then when you're ready, crunch it up and put it in your salad. 
and your smoothie. And so smoothie. you've got you've got exponential number of greens in one little smoothie, yeah. and and that helps. I think that helps. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that'll help for sure. Yeah, the more greens, the better. So that's a, yeah. that's that's a cool tip. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, we've learned a lot. Um, you've uh, you've clearly learned a lot yourself by going through this process, and uh, I want to just congratulate you on all that you've managed to achieve. You've um, certainly defied the odds in terms of you know the typical amount of symptoms that you would have by now if you had of uh, gone down the Western diet approach and and so on so uh not not throwing any shade towards anything that's conventional i'm just saying that you've done extraordinarily and remarkably well um so congratulations on that front and uh thank you for being such a uh, great member of patterson program support and uh, if anyone's wondering about joining obviously uh Suzanne's explained how crucial it was for her to um, get the ongoing help and support, not just from me, but the other members who are all going through their uh, journeys and, and making their improvements. So thanks again for sharing these uh, wonderful tips as well. Thank you, Clint. And I just have to, you know, I, it, I wouldn't be here today and experiencing the good effects of healthy eating and exercise and getting rid of those things that we think are healthy, but are, are really not, um, if it weren't for you. So thank you for reaching out. And I mean, it's got to be a massive amount of work for you to be able to um, reach people like this and the time that you put in away from your family and um, just everything. I mean, I can't even imagine what you go through to do this, but certainly it's a blessing to me. And I'm pretty sure it's a blessing to everybody else that's on the program. And um, if I can just say to people out there, don't let certain things hold you back. Get on the program and get healed because it, it is attainable and it is within your reach. So that, that's what I would have to say. And just thank you for helping me to even come to that conclusion and be able to just have the joy I have today just because of your program and the work that you put into it. So thank you so much, Clint. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thanks, Suzanne.